Hey you all, Muso here to fellow dressmakers. You're welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. In this video, I'll be showing you how to cut and sew a perfect shoulder line princess bustier. Yes, it's also a princess bustier, just that this one comes from the shoulder. Now, if you want to know the secret behind a well cupped shoulder line princess bustier, make sure you watch this video to the very end because I'm here with the A to Z tips and tricks. Now, let's dive in. So here yeah, we'll start by drafting the pattern of course and the bust I'm working with is 40 inches when I divide that by 2 is going to give me 20 and I'll add extra 2 inches making it 22. Now I'm going to place that 22 inches here and mark the midpoint which is 11 inches. I'll mark it on this other side, go down to this pattern, mark the same 11 inches, 22 inches, just 22 and the midpoint 11. Now I'm going to mark the length and the half length is 18 inches. And the next thing I'll do is to just go ahead and connect it like this. Okay, so divide your ball circumference by 2. If it's 40, you divide it by 2 and that would be 20. Then you add extra 2 inches so that it will contain your measurement by the time you add the dots and all of that. Then I will label it front and back. The next thing I'll do is to start from this top line here. We are working on the front first. Then I'll go down to the boss point which is 10 and half under bust which is 14 and half and then the waistline is um, 18 inches which is just the end of this pattern paper here so the distance between the bust point to the under bust is actually four inches for me personally it's three and a half and i know for some people it's three inches so know the kind of person you're working with and know the distance between the bust point and then the under bust I'll connect the lines like so and then label it bust point, under bust and waist. Next, I'm going to take the shoulder measurement which is 16 inches divided by 2 which is 8 inches. Then I'll go down to my armhole line. I'm using 9 inches here. So I'll divide 40 inches by actually 39 by 6 and it gives me 6.1 plus extra 1 and a half. That would give me about 8 something, right? plus one inch for shoulder slope and that would be 9.1 but I'm marking nine inches here just the same thing so I'll just do the back shoulder and um yeah shoulder and then and then the armhole line because I want to connect the two together now so my shoulder is 16 divided by 2 8 inches I did the same thing for the back and then the length of the armhole is 8.1 plus extra one inch for shoulder slope which is 9 inches. The next thing I will do is to mark the bust pan, which is 8 inches divided by 2, that is 4 inches. That's what I'm marking here. And if you don't know how to get to yours, you can divide your bust circumference by 4 minus 2. Let's say it's 40 inches, you divide it by 4, which is 10 inches minus 2, that would give you 8 inches. But hey, I measured this person, so it's just best you measure the person. Next, I'm going to take the dot on the bust pan line, 0 0.75 on both sides which is one and a half, then I'll connect it to the bust point like so. The next thing I'll do is to take the neck width and neck depth, and I just want to use the standard neckline measurement, which is three by three, okay? Three for the width and three inches for the depth. Then I'll curve it like so. Then I'll take the shoulder slope, which is one and a half for the front. The back is going to be one inch, but for the front, I used one and a half. So I'll measure what I have from that shoulder slope to the end of the armhole line. I'll divide it by two. Then on that point, I'm going to come in by half inch. I'll first connect it with a straight ruler like so. Then I'll get my bust measurement divided by four. Yeah, bust circumference divided by four plus extra half inch for ease. Then I'll go to the waist and then my waist circumference divided by four plus the one and a half we use for the dart okay you're going to replace that now i'm going to take the bust dart i came down two inches from this point from the bust point and then i will cover it to the nipple point like so yeah bust point now i can be able to cover the armhole like so can you see that and the next thing we do is to tighten the under bust and I want to use half inch on both sides of the dart leg. Okay, this one and half we already used for the waist dart. 
I'll just take half inch on both sides on this under bust here. Then at first, I'll curve it like so to the bust point. Going to the bust point, I'll curve this part too. Then I'll use this part here to curve this part. Just to connect this part. Extend the that leg from the under bust to the waist. It's that simple. This way, it's not too sharp or too... How do I say it? But this way to prevent some smile lines after joining the bustier. So I'll just clean out this unwanted parts here. Then we'll proceed with the measurement. And the next thing I'm going to do is to extend this dart here to the shoulder. And to do that, I'm going to get the midpoint of the shoulder slope. For here, I have 5 inches, which is 2 and half when you divide that by 2. Then I'm going to connect that to the bust point like so. It's as simple as that. Now, I'll come to this new line and mark um, on this center front here. I will come in by one inch. Then on the side, I'm going to go in by one and a half, making it two and a half. You can just do two inches, you know, one inch on both sides. But I like to do mine this way. Next, I'm going to get our over bust and I'm coming up here by three and a half. Then I'll connect it. You don't have to mark this, <laughs> especially if you're doing yours. I just want you to see what I'm doing. Then on both sides, I'm going to mark half inch and that would serve as over bust tightening. Most people don't do this, but I tried this method and I was wild. I've been using this method since. So I'll connect from the one and a half on the side bust to that half inch. Then on the center, one inch to that half inch. Then you see that. Now I'm going to connect from that over bust tightening to our bust point like so. Look at that shape. It's already giving what it's supposed to give. I'm actually this person who do not swallow everything just like that. I try to work my way around it and see what works best for me. And that's why I came up with this pattern, this method. Next, I'm going to measure what I took in as that on this shoulder point and I have two and a half. Then I will replace it from the sh um, shoulder tip. Yeah, shoulder tip. Then I'll connect it like so. Now, this is another highlight of this video. You don't have to place your curve just like this and curve it anyhow you like. You have to do it the right way. And I'll just um, curve this one now. I'll just try to curve it to show you what we have. Then I'll show you the right way to do it. Can you see that? It's okay like this, so, but for some people, the chest area will be too tight. Okay? And it's not possible that you just curve it just like so no now because if you measure the distance here now from the existing armhole line can you see it's just too wide instead of that measure what you have here i have seven and a half okay then i'm going to measure from the center front to the first that leg and i have about 4.2 i'll transfer that 4.2 to the other that leg and then mark my seven and a half can you see where that seven and a half falls in now i'm going to take my curve let me clean the first the other curve then I'm going to place it like this, making sure it meets that seven and a half that I marked. Okay, then I'll connect it like so. This is the right way you do it. Your chest area is still intact. The armhole is still intact. Everything is just on check. So I'll just clean off this unnecessary part so that you see clearly what we have. We are now using the main armhole line. We are now using the last line there. Okay. Now, if you measure this over bust tightening here, I measure from the previous armhole line to that, this our new armhole line is just the same one inch. Can you see? So, this is the perfect way to draft a shoulder line princess bustier. This way, you get it right. It's well cupped. And more importantly, it won't shorten any of your measurements. It just comes out perfect. Now that we are done with the front, let's go over to the back and complete the measurement. I'll take the um, neckline measurement, 34 width, and then the depth is just one and a half, just for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm using this pattern for another beautiful dress, which will be up on the channel too. Next, I'm going to start from the shoulder line and go down to 16 inches, which, which is actually the back length of this person I'm working with. Okay, the front is 18, while the back is 16. And then I'll tighten the center back with one inch. Then I'll use this curve like so and curve it. If you've been following me, you know I don't do the back tightening straight because the body is not straight on the back. It's kind of slanted or curvy. 
Now start from this new line and take the bust measurement divided by four. I'll mark exactly, you know, for the front we added half inch for ease. Then for the back, I just marked exactly. Then for the waist, I'll do the same thing. Waist measurement divided by four plus extra one inch for that. I'll be adding the that just now. Now for the that, I'll just start from that back tightening, center back tightening, and take the that width, which is four inches. Then the length is six and a half. Okay, then I will mark from the previous center back line. It will be five inches right then i'll just mark it just to have a straight line like so then i'll connect it actually if i had measured from the previous center back line it's going to be five inches but from this new center back tyson it's going to be four inches i marked four inches which is actually my that yeah bust pan that to it then i'll mark half inch on both sides and then go ahead and take the shoulder slope of one inch connect that to the neckline get the midpoint of the shoulder i'll mark it then i'll connect it to the that line there okay now you can decide to ignore this but sometimes i like to just do half inch yeah 0 0.25 on both sides and that would give us half inch then i'll connect it like so to the other existing that I would uh, replace the half inch here on the shoulder, then I'll curve the armhole like so. And I think we are pretty much done. Or do you think anything is missing? So I'll just add my zipper allowance on this center back here, following the existing curve, just one inch zipper allowance. And after that, I'll use this curve again to connect the dots and extend the neckline to, to the um zipper allowance so this is what it looks like after we are done can you see that it just came out so perfect and neat too now let me show you how to cut i'll just go ahead and separate this pattern here separate the front and back like so then i'll first cut out the back you can first cut out the front if you want but i just want to um get that back pattern out of the way then we work on the front I'll just cut every single line I have here except the center back tightening okay and then I'll cut the dart too now for this dart you can decide after cutting to close it from the shoulder to the length of the waist dart hope that makes sense so the length is actually six and a half you can decide to close it to that six and a half so that you just stitch uh, the waist dart but for what I'm working with it's just best I cut it that way now for this front I'm just going to slash open the dart to the bust point like so and that way i'll be able to close the bust that i'll fold that line that two inches that we use for the dart and then i'll uh, tape it down with this paper tape and then of course i'll cut every other thing we have here and as you can see we didn't do any start any neckline style here that's because i just want to show you how to draft this pattern I i'm actually using this pattern for something else so basically the neckline is not part of this tutorial i'll be doing that in the next video okay do where to check it out now when you get to this side before you cut it out make sure you blend it like so because the boss that to take some part of the measurement so do where to blend it before you cut it out and after cutting this is what it looks like let's go ahead and transfer this to the fabric and for this my fabric is folded into two and i'm cutting the back first the first thing i'll do is to extend this armhole line and the waistline here this is the side back okay then i'll add my allowance of 1.75 add any amount of allowance that you want okay so for every other part i'm just going to add just half inch i just cut half inch joining allowance just for the side that we have our 1.75 okay for the center back i do not need allowance because i already have my zipper allowance and i want to maintain that so this is what it looks like and for the front like i said i'm using this pattern for something else so because of the neckline i'm going to cut it single single like this so it's not on fold except you want to use the same fabric for the lining then go ahead and fold it okay so i'll just go ahead and repeat the same thing i did for the back on this side here i'll extend the armhole line i'll extend the armhole line and the waistline then i'll add my allowance of 1.75 
for both the front um bosses and then the waist okay every other part will just be half inch joining allowance the essence of extending this line is, is just so you do not shorten the armhole or add it add too much allowance to it just go ahead and extend the lines like that and it will guide you to add your half inch the right way if you're adding half inch or even the side measurement okay so i'll call to half inch on every other part except the side don't forget to notch the under bust after cutting like so for this one <laughs> i don't know where the under bust is right now so i'm just going to place it like this and then notch the under bust so after this i'm just going to cut the lining following the shape i have for this both front and back i cut my word in two you know how to do all of that right and this is what i have can you see that so this is just how you are going to join everything i have my paper stay for both um the lining and then the main fabric and i have my wording for the side front and then the center front the back is just paper stay for both lining and then the main fabric and when i open it this is the shape actually this is how the shape is supposed to be um, following the curve of your bust <laughs> and this is the center okay so the next thing I'm going to do now is to just go ahead and join it. This is not hard. It's just like joining a straight dart. It's not hard. This is actually simpler when it comes to joining more than the, um, what is it called? I'm hope Princess Bustier. This is simpler than that. Just go ahead and join it like this until you get to the top. Okay? And then I'll do the same thing for the other part. Join the line in two, just same way. Neatly iron it. And voila! it's ready don't you just love don't you so this will be the end of what today let me know your thoughts in the comment section did you find this helpful and i will see you on my next one be good bye